the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Thank you. Just thank you for life. Thank you for grace. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercy that we have the eyes to see the things that He has shown us by grace. Thank you. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healings. Thank you for safety. Thank you for protection. Thank you for preservation. Don't be tired. Let the list go on and on. And tell Him thank you. Lord, that I am here in the midst of your people ready to receive, I say thank you. Thank him for your ministry. Thank him for the influence that he has granted you. Thank him for giving you his voice, his spirit, his wisdom, his anointing. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles but by your spirit and your grace i'm confident you saw them but i'm here to say i love you i'm here to say Father, we declare that without your presence, without your word, without your spirit, nothing can be made out of our lives. We stand before your people, connecting with all who are part of this family around the world. We declare that you alone are faithful, you alone are God. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A thousand tongues will not be enough to say thank you. We are not in ministry if lives are not being changed. We are not in ministry if your power is hindered through our lives and from our lives. We're not in ministry if your word is not coming in season. We're not in ministry if your voice is not heard in the midst of us. But Lord, we thank you. We're not in ministry if no one is around to hear what you are declaring to us. You have exalted us. You have honored us. You have blessed us. And we thank you. We thank you. Tonight, I ask that you bless us, challenge us again. We have come to Bethel, the place of bread. We have come to the threshing floor. We have come to the place of purification. We have come to the place of impartation. We have come to the place of hope. We have come to the place of transformation. We have come to the place of the oil and the wine. We have come to the place where you can open our eyes and wash it with eyes out that we may see.
we have come to the place where the voice of the Lord is not scarce tonight oh God we cry that in a new way you speak to us you challenge us set us on fire once again and oh God beyond the speakings of a man we pray that your voice will echo from the throne and cause us to hear in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say that I am strong in the strength of the Lord. We will trust in you. Let the wind We're going to sing just one more song. Amen, amen, amen. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. Let it be so. Amen. 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 To your will, to your word, to your power. Amen. 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 Sing Amen. 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 says now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks no money no ministry no influence all that is rubbish the Bible says they looked unto him that's the key he lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent the one on the ground could not have an effect on them he said if it be thou bid me come and peter set his gaze but the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes you know that song turn your eyes upon jesus who knows that song his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strange 
of God over my life shake away unbelief shake away limitations I may not look like it but the spirit of God is doing something you may not feel like a man of God but the anointing is within your horizon there's no plan of darkness that is able to quash the purposes of God over your life can you prophesy to yourself going to the place of destiny by the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit This, this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate herod to look for where jesus is satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of jesus i declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you you see for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the bible says there were many lights buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for God. And the devil will want to lie to you to say, for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign? Let me tell you this. Do you know in the spirit, five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not be like it. But all of a sudden, he said, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, your life will just shift and change. In a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do
speak over your life before you sit down. Psalm 45. Shabrando zikatulia hasarabale. Psalm 45. The Lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life. Words are powerful. Realities are created through words. 45 verse 12. It says, And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. It says, Even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor. There is... Listen. I taught you something. We are, we are going to teach on something, but it's just a grace that came on me now. Listen to me. Listen. You see, brothers and sisters, everything in life that we know is bought with money. Is that true? Do you agree with me? But do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something? Come, promise. Promise once a phone. Listen carefully. And then I give him money. This money can buy a phone. Do you agree? What if it is money he wants? What can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon. And alongside with it, buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. Are we together? There is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing. On earth, this looks like the highest, most valuable thing. When you possess this, you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish. But in the kingdom, there are realities that we possess. Listen carefully. And the Bible says, with it, everything, whether this, Whatever it is you can possess is, is called the true riches. There are seven of this spiritual capital. One of them is called light. We buy things with light. The power, light is capital in the spirit. The anointing is capital in the spirit. Words are capital in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season, I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare, may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life. May it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life. May it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life. We are going to sit down shortly. Let me pray for the grace for speed. Now listen, be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically. So you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere. Right now I stretch my hands. The grace that came upon Elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of Ahaz. By this apostolic and prophetic grace, I stand in the office of my God I shift you by speed. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. Speed. 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 I prophesy it. In one day. Let Zion be born. I command speed. Speed in your finances. Speed in your spiritual life. Speed in every area of your life. whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift I stand by prophecy and I shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters 
new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of Jesus we see your glory you know that song In this kingdom it is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you I'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again I'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry straight fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom everything these hands come upon I declare that it is anointed it will be an instrument of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down if you can just, just leave those under the anointing please sit down Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated. Oh, I was not this. I didn't have wealthy parents. But there is something that can come upon men and help them. You are receiving the help of God. God doesn't just help people by wishing. He puts something upon your life. I've taught you this. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Not what you want. Not what men say. They can talk nonsense from morning till night. If you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense What is upon you 
is what controls what is around you i repeat what is upon you if you desire something around you and it's not there don't look for it look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire always like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less work nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the count that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul My witness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, Lord, the God that won't run dry Yes, you are the God that won't run dry other things can run dry but jesus you're the car that will run dry jesus you're the car that will run dry thank you holy spirit we are gathered here and we will always allow you to build to change to lift any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life i speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life i stretch my hands and i command liberty right now in the name of jesus Please be seated. God bless you. Mm. This is Koinonia. The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you. Because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words, it's not just a lecture. The words you are hearing is spirit and life. So while the word is coming, something, an anointing, one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too. If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the spirit, then every other thing becomes lord over your life but those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom hallelujah i have a new topic tonight but last week um i was to give us six points on what the secret place is 
I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time. Let me quickly give us the last one. Please, you can, um, especially if you were here, just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion. We discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness. We discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy. That the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny i'm lifting your family said the spirit of god no this is not this is not for everybody i'm speaking to someone now i'm lifting your family it will be like a dream it will be like a dream i'm lifting your family 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 the lord is bringing bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the lord is doing a confusion of many years coming to end within a week within a week the Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying I will visit you again of course everyone can receive but this is a particular revelation God is saying I am coming to you again the way I came before, I am coming again. I am coming again. It will be in this month, this month of June. He will come to you again with a very strange encounter. And you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment we gain power not by strolling on the seat it is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power in a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life and in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that i'm anointed if you come to me i can pray for you but as far as god's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season That's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons. They are still anointed. They still love God. But the anointing to play a key role in God's program is not there. So although they are anointed, you still get blessed. But it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season.
the Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you, is going to inspire you, and is going to provoke you. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. You're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. Don't stop, keep praying. Galilean, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Galilean, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. God most high Jesus Christ Please be seated if you can Hallelujah sit down get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Shekete kota salabrati kete keli adaba. Shereke tu kasalabrati kete baladaba. Shale baratu sere keli adaba baladaba baladabu. Shakato ske pratish kala brendi keli ba. Reke tu kasada baladaba kote adaba. Shekete baratu sekete bali adaba. Something is lifting from your life. Sheka paruta si adaba. Lifting from your life. Sheba koto si. Lifting from your life, shake it all skilly abara. I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. 
by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I change that situation now for David please give us amplified it says for David after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel but he served it in his own generation he said fell asleep and was buried but he said David serve God in his generation it's not enough to serve God it's enough to serve God within the context of a generation are we together now there are mandates that are left for generations every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the bible records that was used by god was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger yielded program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed I am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how I love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboye because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what I'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation there is a generation where your relevance is allocated to god sends men not just to places he sends men to a generation and if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence then you will live a very useless life and david after he served the will of god there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others are we together every time god was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable 
to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of failure and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us why then is this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told of saying this the Lord not do this and that and that 14 and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee it didn't look to Gideon like he was sent but God said have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty There is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh jacob there is oh god of jacob he said there is a generation mandated by god to seek god in the similitude of jacob are we together now when god tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing 
he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation he lifts up Paul the apostle are we together now so God is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God because he said that mandate that was on one man Jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with Abraham introduced the wall of men to these possibilities the God of Abraham then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac the God of Abraham was a springboard the mysteries of God that his father knew and out of his own dealings with God God created a name called the God of Isaac by the time we get to Psalms here Jacob had done his own too and God names himself by a man's experience with him Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham they were not named after Isaac they are not called the Abrahamites they are not called the Isaacites they are called the Israelites not even the Jacobites so powerful was this encounter that God said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob you want to influence a generation hmm. God is lifting her Dr. Halima I'm seeing her climb a ladder the Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence that's what that's what i'm saying in the spirit you want to be relevant to a generation if you love god and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of God And I want you to follow me as I share with you. There are certain things in the spirit that when you touch, you will never be irrelevant. Please listen to me. But most of what it takes to be relevant, believers are not seeking it. We are seeking nonsense all around. Yet we are looking for kingdom relevance. The things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context. First, in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation that's why i shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic and david served his generation i hope you know listen very carefully i hope you know 
that when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2 from then onwards the strategic apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this Bible when you study history not just Bible history you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of God within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in God's program for all seasons no sir I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation I have seen people who are not too anointed but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance there are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer and um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit fasting prayer with all honor and respect you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication it sounds very basic yet in a way that looks as though it's a charm they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly unbendingly they have entered their sabbath in relevance and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still scrounging scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you <laughs> You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. One more time. generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said I must still contribute let me gather the materials and God said this man David you you are a man after my own heart and because of that you may not serve in that generation but i will show you look at the messiah and david saw a vision the lord said to my lord sit down that was the coronation of jesus he said david so long he he mastered his generation there was no other voice speaking samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man 
was about to step into the anointing God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel the Bible says of Samuel that none of his words none of his words fell to the ground but remember before Samuel started there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time there was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John after prophet Malachi it was somewhat a very dark season for the church no prophecy no nothing everything and all of a sudden a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden for the first time they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then John was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when Jesus show up, showed up this is what he said that I may decrease I have exhausted myself Jesus listen John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus the moment he brought Jesus down he died too with him although his mandate was over he said who is the next let me uphold him let me give you this secret I want to teach you something powerful if you are in ministry never fight your sons a father that fights his sons loses his honor a son that fights his father loses his life there are punishments allocated for the various offenses every time you see God lifting a man join to lift it if the last move of God always fights the next move of God chances are that when we are in the program of God and a shift begins to happen and God begins to raise other voices the the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what God is doing and they now begin to fight it and you cannot fight what is of God you will go down and so they go down together with it do you know why David's name still remain relevant Lord you will not allow me build the temple you said I've shed innocent blood. I would have been offended and David's name would have gone down. But he said, no, Solomon, I will gather the materials for you. Build the house. I will gather the material. Everybody who partnered with everything God was doing also remained relevant. That was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box. I'm a prostitute. I mean, I don't have a name. But Jesus, can I partner with your relevance? And Jesus said, anywhere they talk about me, this woman too, her story will be remembered. There are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of God's program. Once upon a time, they were at the epicenter of God's program. But either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end. You know why Billy Graham remained relevant? He knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute. And all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation. And although he's dead, he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men. Same thing with my dear mentor, eternally, Dr. Miles Monroe. He died, but his books brought him back to life. He said, body, you can be laid to rest. Mind, stand up and keep speaking. Miles Monroe is still alive. His body is in the grave. But his mind is still in us. We have kept him alive. Because he saw a generation 
one of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on the mystery not everybody will be relevant for our generation once upon a time papa ea adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation no matter how prophetic you are your mother would prefer to listen to papa ea adeboye than you i said it in lagos that even if i cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful i am an old woman will look at me and say wow young man i'm impressed let me go to redemption camp quickly i'll see you later because even if they come for this program you were not sent to that generation the voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of god to them listen demons know this occultists know this believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of god the four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of god what i am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are establishing this kingdom your generation will know you to be the face of something about god to them every time you talk of prosperity we go to some adeemi for his generation when you talk about faith and signs and wonders am i not a man of faith but you see our parents will not come to me as that reference i didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of god i'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of god you want to stay relevant it's more than making money you must represent a dimension of god to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that by the time they are established they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension who is the samadhi of our generation who is the bishop Oyedeko of our generation who is the papa Iya deboy of our generation who is the wf kumuyo of our generation who is the apostle babalola of our generation it's not just giving yourself titles i'm apostle nonsense i'm i'm prophet rubbish that's not the issue it's about staying it is your generation that will call you not you the bible said they shall call you the reward for being branded to represent a dimension of god is the name they call you are we together some of us your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church you better thank god for sending a generation for you to grow with them are we together i remember years ago when he and i started there were a lot of young people students all around and people would just look at it like a children's on the school class and i said oh dear those people that are children are now workers scattered all around you see that if papa Ia deboe says all believers in nigeria fast for three days whether you're a member of redeem or not you are going to fast if your pastor said don't fast you just respect him and pass and say nonsense <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man he has represented the voice of god not just to nigeria but to the world contending for kingdom relevance i will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant i have studied the systems of the kingdom and i have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of god men and women of god especially in this nation are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance the scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love god but the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood and our generation is at the mercy 
of a bridge a repairer of the bridge otherwise we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially are we together praise the lord five keys let me not waste your time straight to the point five keys you want to serve your generation please i want you to listen very carefully to become influential enough to establish the purposes of the purposes of god within a generation number one you must know god you must know god you want to serve the purposes of god you must know god not you may know god not you can know god you must have an encounter with god daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of god are we together it says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are god they are god let me tell you what that means to know god is not just to know the general god you must know the god revealed to your generation if you are in jacob's generation and you know the god of abraham alone you will not be relevant in jacob's generation every generation has a dimension of god revealed to it whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context are we blessed but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits listen to me in this kingdom it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory ask any great man if they are honest enough they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit whether in business in ministry listen carefully career whatever it is if you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results whether through occultism whether in the it's secular or whatever i can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit for 30 years jesus as the word the living logos was powerless but when the holy ghost came upon him that partnership turned him into christos the christ the anointed one the messiah you must know god you must know god jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24 please give it to us quickly jeremiah chapter 9 thus saith the lord not an angel let not the wise man glory in his wisdom our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that's the pride of the believer your the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside because of the food that is on your table because of your degree that is in your drawer are we together no. all those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to god those who will be relevant in these end times those who will defy the operation of demons those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness they are not just well-meaning people but those who know their god understand it and knoweth me 
are we blessed you go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teach him business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right i was a graduate since 1961 and i've not built a house now and look at all these small 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 boys sorry for you the foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to god but your knowledge of god when last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness and please those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful when you are teaching the secular you go ahead but when you are mentoring people let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit are we together you know you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you're saying you don't know anything about secular success you're wrong you're wrong you must know god jacob had an encounter with god a nation has never been named after you a nation has never been named after your father and my father listen carefully a nation has never been named even after your president there is i'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man so when a man is so relevant that god's nation is named after him study how he rose up like that the foundation was not intelligence the foundation was an encounter genesis chapter 28 when you read from 11 to 17 he lighted upon a place and laid down on a stone to sleep and the bible says when you begin to read down to 17 that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven listen very carefully and then at the top of it give us verse uh, let's see verse 13 or 14 and listen behold the lord stood above it let's hear what god is saying god said i am the god of who god himself is calling himself the god of abraham so it's not something men are calling god himself called himself not i am the king of kings i am the god of abraham i am the god of isaac stop no other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list that means it was never supposed to just stop as the god of israel i am the god of abraham the god of isaac i am the god of jacob uh-huh i am the root of david david added himself i am this and that then joshua selman too comes to add himself so that our children when you say i'm not saying you say the god of joshua selman i'm just teaching you how it is when you say the god of joshua selman it's not the same as the god of abraham i don't know what abraham saw i don't know what what his business was with god but there is a dimension you hear the people say the god of our fathers had appeared to me at that time jacob had not yet been in the list he says the land where out thou will this and that and that and that and then jacob woke up in the morning and said the lord was in this place and i knew not how terrible he said this is the house of god the gates of heaven the next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22 please give it to us we're reading down to 30 chapter 32 from verse 22 22 32 22 chapter 32 and verse 22 
Let me read it from here. Chapter 32 and verse 22. And he rose up that night, Jacob now, and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over forth Jabok 23. We're reading to 30. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. 24. And Jacob was left alone. Jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance, he had to give it away. Wives go. Possessions go. Everything go. And when he was alone, the reason why many of us may never encounter God is because there are many things together with us. Your money is still there. Your house is still there. Every other thing is there. But when you are left alone, he says, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the strongest part. That means you have been strong by yourself without me. I see that you so love your degree to a point that every time I say I'm lifting you, you smile and say it's because I'm an engineer. Of course I should be lifted. It's because I'm a doctor. It's because I'm an architect. Lord, I know that contract and God's touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength. It is by my strength. And the hall of Jacob's tie was out of joint and he wrestled with him. 26. And he said, let me go God now for the day breaketh and he said Jacob may that be someone's testimony oh, that you say Lord in this generation I don't just want to be a story I will hold on to you and people say look everybody is getting a job oh, everybody is moving and you say just leave me may God bless you but Lord I cannot leave this place you see many graduates make a foolish mistake the moment they write their last exam they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done they carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion when you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say lord i'm not leaving this place until i f what will i tell my generation that I went to school for five years? Is that enough to give you a voice? I entered somewhere in Abuja and the receptionist had three MSCs. Receptionist. Three MSCs. I said, if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk, you will be a foolish person. Three. Two of them were abroad and then one in the country. Receptionist. Don't think it's a small place. A salary can... Let me just keep quiet. Oh, don't don't think reception is like you are thinking one small kiosk no that's a place where only kings enter and i said my god you need more in this life brothers and sisters i'm not teaching you to be lazy but i'm telling you that if you want to command a voice you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you and they say we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already he's pitying you because he knows one week to the promotion interview your leg refuses to move from your bed and you come to the office and he says well just to let you know that you had me you had that they say my father is a herbalist <laughs> the wicked world that we live in i know someone who was promoted true story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there they went to consult all kinds of people some habali says his wife that killed him some other habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know god to a point that someone is concocting a charm the first portion he drops fire response fire and says no no there are some touch knots ah, ah. he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm listen 
something happened i think it was last week one of our dear ones some of these touts these boys around that catch people collect phones and the rest and i got to hear that one of our dear ones as he went home he was whether he was on his way home or he went home i think he went home and then went to get something or so afterwards that some of these touts these guys just attacked him they attacked him collected phone this they caught him like this with a knife like a ram they showed it to me when i was in lagos over the over the, the, the week i just came back today and then when i saw it i was just laughing i allowed them the protocol and the rest to shut the door i got down on my knees i said lord except i am not anointed the person who did this thing listen when i said that by evening they had caught them they are right now as you call alex outside the police now right now do you know how they caught them they after that prayer the guy now went to go and waylay somebody he didn't know he was a police officer then they caught him and packed all the phones and the phone they picked was the guy's own they called and his friend was with him in the hospital as it is today they are carrying him to the hospital to identify him and only god knows what they will do for him do you know god that much that the bowing of your knees can manipulate anything in the earth realm see let me tell you if you don't understand this most times you would think people are boasting when someone says i will pray for you you've heard that thing i will pray for you doesn't pray for us so because you know his prayer is powerless but there are people if they say they will pray for you rejoice they are not using your faith he said for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father i'm praying for your sake ah jesus prayed for us so john 17 he prayed for us when i was coming the military people came to greet me i said please you people should use those boys to teach people in this area that there are still apostolic and prophetic voices we are not just acting nonsense here and then all kinds of young boys just go and continue oppressing people what devil what nonsense i'm saying it again let me announce across this territory that any gentleman any lady whether you are here or not that gets up to manipulate people buckle their house i command the earth to fight them from tonight that some of them will go to bed and lie down and not wake up The territory should know that God has voices. It's not by coming on TV and making noise. Elijah said there shall be no rain. We need to sanitize this spiritual environment. Halagbara By the mighty but the people you don't need to know everything about God you just need to know the dimension of him revealed to you I don't boast of knowing everything about God there are some things about God I totally don't know but let me tell you there are dimensions of God that he has shown me by his grace your pursuit if you want to be relevant to a generation you must know these dimensions of God going to church is not enough are you hearing what I'm saying praying and fasting is not knowing God there are only tools to help you know God one of the major reasons why people don't know God is they don't give him time be careful with this I'm busy I'm busy you need to give God time to know him our generation we pray we fast we sing we go to church but we are unwilling to give God time to know him 
if you see people doing three days fast there's fire on the mountain real fire on the mountain lord where are you then the fire goes down and you leave him that you sit down and say lord i want to know you what message do i have to my generation you must know god i'm challenging every one of us here please tell yourself the truth and stop allowing people to just clap for you and say wow prayer warrior wow fasting giant wow word word revelation signs signs and wonders producer and you move around fooling yourself that you know god and life tests you and there is nothing about god that you know he says that I may know him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me, O God. That I may know you. Lord, I'm tired of ordinary Christianity without power. Show me your glory. Show me your grace. Shiba Koroto Suprahati Asalabarati. Hallelujah. There are things you must know about God. There are things I know about men. Um I used to have one, I, I, I cannot, I can't remember who exactly, but there used to be one gentleman years ago, I used to tease him. He looked very powerless as a man, but you don't see any power, you can almost shake him. And I said, if they ever tell me you fought somebody, I won't believe because I know you. I know you enough to know you are not even strong to lift a sizable chair. So if somebody tells you that that guy finished beating one police officer, you just laugh and say, except the anointing came on him. There was something David knew about God that made him stand before Goliath. We stand and face the challenges in life based on the knowledge of God that we have. The armies of Israel had the same weapons that David would later hold, but they could not confront Goliath. There was something Goliath too knew. He was not just big. Goliath was not the only giant in the land. Even among the Israelites, there were also giants. But they stood and Goliath was roaring, wicked man. And David said, don't mind him. Carry the sling. He said, I'm going to remove this, your head. You will fall down. I will use your sword, cut it and feed the birds. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, you will soon know. When he wound that thing, it was not just his hand winding it. There was an anointing. And he hit Goliath once. Goliath himself was shocked that he fell. There was something Joshua, oh bless his name Joshua, knew about God. And he said, go around, don't mind all this big mountain for nothing. Notice that all the challenges are usually very big. Jericho, Goliath, Red Sea. So don't be surprised when yours is big. Why will you expect it to be small? How then will God be glorified? 25 years barrenness. Are we together there is something you need to know about God that you will stand before a generation and they'll say ma it's two years and you are not pregnant yet he said just wait and all of a sudden by the third year triplets will come nine years in three years and they'll come and say ah, you just gave birth I didn't give birth I manifested miracles don't call that is not delivery you go and try it if you get triplets, show me the science of producing triplets. I know something about God. Where someone threatens you and says, in this office, they bow to me to rise. If you are not willing to bow to me with honorarium of one million and then respect, 
you are not rising up. and everybody above you will say just this guy is connected to the presidency and he say all right sir may god bless you and you go back in the night and do something that will make that man call you in a hurry and sign your document and you say just just for starters to let you know that there are men and there are men are we together someone plants a charm to kill you and he's sleeping in his room the charm meets him there physically again charm said you sent me and somebody changed my direction and brought me to the same place I remember years ago one of our lady went to meet a herbalist in this place this this one a herbalist for something like that she kept giving him money was concocting a charm for something and then the last one now he now asked for an honorarium of thirty thousand. i said her or he, he now started calling her number you better come and fulfill your this you have made me start the charm true story you will run mad and she now ran to me came and confessed his pressure a and b and c happened i said what that happened is so my concern is not the charm is his life tell him that he should check in the realm of the spirit you don't speak like that if you have not met god because many people have made bold says when I used to counsel people in area E, some of the protocol people would testify. People would come with a letter. You would think it's mineral they are holding for me until they open it. You will now see that it's a charm. They collected it from one baba and brought it and I said, bring it. I look at it as a nonsense. You ask the charm to come. There is something you need to know. This world is wicked if all you know is what your eyes have seen you better start crying because there are arrows that fly by day you you don't need to offend anybody who are your friend nonsense it's a wicked world you mean this lady is getting married ah no we have to do something Abba. you mean this man is the one this young man is the one building this house no I, I, ah. you mean is this this young guy phd no it took me 11 years to get phd why will he get phd in four years no you mean this young lady five children no way our world is wicked it's not in news are we together years ago um one gentleman that i know got married in kaduna and then we went then to go and just celebrate with them and while they were bringing the gift true stories i like praying for gifts we noticed i was sitting down and i noticed after everybody had dropped everything the wedding was almost over and then a woman just came with something that looks like a bucket just dropped it i tapped one of my colleagues and said the lord just showed me something we opened that bucket true story and we, you know this bucket you put sugar or semovita white this white bucket we saw it with a stone in the middle i lifted it i said you see this this is fruitfulness blocked that woman will get married now until her husband drives and says, we can't marry two men. Go, let me look for a woman. And I told them, I said, you people should just be praying on the other gift. Just leave me with this one. Can you confront the gates of darkness and go to bed? If they bring a charm for you now and say, sorry, help me and scatter it, please. Will you say, come for koinonia? on friday or come and drop it in miracle service no 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 apostle is busy bring it and you hold it and without saying any prayer from where you are holding it someone is jumping from their house and saying i won't do it again ah. may god make us a powerful generation all this ministry of just falling down and he said two people will fall the realm of the spirit is higher than that oh you need results shift in people's destiny just falling down and rolling and standing up they that know their god you get up and have a dream and in that dream you see that there's obituary every month in your house you don't sit quietly and then everybody starts dying and you say ah people are dying 
that's not the time to start disturbing me i say apostle you are sleeping ah uh, prayer department benga promise pastor alpha kenny no you get up and you say he's not only the god of abraham he's not only the god of isaac you are my god And you announce to Satan and say if you if you near the vicinity of my family again it's a decree it's not pride know when to be a lion and know when to be a lamb no warrior is a lamb in the face of battle whoever told you that this world is a playground you must know God greatness is warfare greatness is not just an equation a plus b equals to greatness no sir i say it jokingly only god knows the shrines on earth that my name has gone to maybe your zaria city any other place oh god let him sleep and not wake up while they finish the charm i just stretch shabasos kabarando kasilia kata God gives men the power to lay it down and the power to take it up. You must know God. Take the time to know God. You don't know God by a one hour weekly service. No sir. You don't know God by a five minutes Bible study. You don't know God by an occasional fast when there's trouble. You don't know God by a fire brigade closed door retreat. You give God time and say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to love you more. There are many of us tonight, God is calling and saying, Stop this religion and be serious with me. Stop this religion. I'm a deacon in my church. I'm an elder. I'm the chairman of marriage counseling. I am the pastor in charge of choir. I'm no settle down and say lord i want to know you reveal yourself i'm tired of lying and pretending i don't have boldness because i don't know you knowing god is not becoming a pastor listen to my message knowing god experientially god uses experiences to reveal men you can't just know god every experience in your life now is an opportunity to know a dimension of god don't waste it by crying around like a fool say lord there must be something all of a sudden all my money has disappeared to the point that i don't have five naira instead of just saying it's an attack lord there's something you want to show me el shaddai is calling el shaddai he wants to show me that he's the all-sufficient god don't waste your pain don't waste your tears. Use them as an opportunity to know something about God. Apostle have been barren five years. All right. Use the opportunity to know something about God. So that the next time you are saying he can make a way in the wilderness. It's not a song. It's your life. Are we together? Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw five points. When my result came out, I saw 2.5 cry there is something about God you need to know it is because many people don't know God that's why they don't receive some prayers notice that people receive prayers according to their level of insight about God when you pray and say in the name of Jesus favor amen but when you say in the name of Jesus someone who has no business coming to you I call ah, they just say amen careless amen that doesn't have faith in it because that dimension of God has not been captured 
Let me give us one more and we pray for tonight. We'll continue next week. Contending for generational relevance. Contending for kingdom relevance. Those who will reign in this kingdom must be men and women who know God. Whether you are a businessman, whether you are whatever, you must know God. You know, sometimes, sometimes I counsel people when I travel and um, while I'm counseling them, the Lord begins to show me something. Like charms that they have in their houses or something that they tie on their waist for protection and preservation. And yet they come and sit down as a man of God. Do you know if you are not powerful, that thing will fight you. In the name of praying for somebody, oh God, let this guy win chairmanship. And that night you sleep and an old man walks you in a dream. One word, two words, be careful. And just leaves you. And you wake up with headache, you don't know where it's coming from and where it is going to. You go to the hospital, nothing. For one week, then he comes again. Say, so be careful. Then the headache stops. The next time somebody comes for you to pray for him, you say, no, please, go to Koinonia. When Dagon was put face to face with the ark of God, the ark didn't remove hands to touch him. They came back in the morning and met Dagon. If he just fell backwards, that's not honor. It fell face forward. May your life from tonight be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Listen, my prayer for you, Koinonia, hear me, is that you don't mock yourself by praying three hours and yet you are afraid of every manifestation of the valley of the shadow of death. These boys that scam, years ago they sent a text to my phone. One, I think it's a text they sent to people. We are watching you now from where we are and something 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 you have, you have it's like they are threatening you maybe they are watching you through a window somewhere and I, I said look at this they can now lie to you and say go and drop hundred thousand near the green tree near your house and you would think they are really watching you whereas it's a general text they send to everybody fear can create images are we together you have a dream and in the dream dead people are coming to visit you you don't get up and say i saw my father he died 1983 thank god he's your father but what does the living have to do with the dead do you know when you see dead people in your dream i don't mean departed saints now glorified dead people in your dream that's the spirit of the grave that's not the spirit of death that's the, the grave itself has a spirit it's a magnet it's calling you like you are invoking that's what is happening. You don't get up and say, Chai! Nigeria said, No! What is Nigeria? Shabakatos Kalabata. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? You pray in tongues for five minutes. Distribute fire everywhere. And ask that devil to use the face of your father again. It's not your father, it is appointed once for men to die. The man you see that you are calling your father is not your father. He's a devil carrying the face of your father. What, what father? Your father is there enjoying in heaven and the devil is using the face of one person. Come, come to us. Come, we are calling you. Let's go home. Come and eat yam. See palm oil. What nonsense is that? That's what happens to a lot of people. They just get up and an infirmity has entered their spirit they go to the hospital and check again and again and again until they die the living has nothing to do with if i see anybody i know who has died if it is of god departed saints in light i know if it is a demon spirit i know there is a gulf what fellowship has light got to do it please i'm teaching you this thing if we dwell just in knowing god those who will stand and represent the purposes of god you need to look at the spirit of death eyeball to eyeball 
were coming from 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 lagos and and i think it was because of the weather and the pilots too my god the plane was as if it was it was just plain around i was sleeping ask them i was sleeping ah if it will crash i will enter if i enter it will not crash ah apostle the other i don't know who that other person is and what he believes he said let the redeemed of the lord say so you know in this world don't trouble anybody and nobody will trouble. what nonsense are you saying like that the bible said declare ye that ye might test be justified jesus prophesied that i would die but i will come back if jesus didn't say it he will not resurrect let him that glory it glory in this please brothers and sisters there are several people here we thank god for the crowds but koinonia god is not just looking for crowds god is looking for quality people that know god not just the uh, man of god pray for me man of god pray for me on everything man of god sing for me man of god worship for me when will you now build capacity to be a blessing it's all right you can start small our little children in this ministry are more spiritual than most of you these little kids you see the fire you stand near them and see the presence that oozes out of them because of the simplicity of their heart they are feeding with the food of adults as children pray they pray fast they fast some of them come to meet me after service my daddy is sick my this is sick i tell them darling bring your hand i place my hand and i say go and lay your hands and truly they will do it but adults they won't do it they'll just say don't don't worry apostle just rub your face with with handkerchief and give it because you are afraid of embarrassment Is God speaking to us today by the grace of God and with all humility there are things that I know about God that has brought rest to my life I show you how to be free from worry know God there are things when you know about God when others are crying you are laughing you are not laughing because you are inhuman you are laughing because of a rest that the knowledge of God has given you it was Bishop Oyedepo who said one time his wife was pregnant and all of a sudden they noticed she was spotting and then, you know, medically speaking, they said she's lost the baby. And he just shouted. He said, is it a baby you are delivering or blood? My dinner, please. Come on now. That word maintained that child in that stomach until he gave birth. Blessed is she that believes for unto her, not unto them, unto her, some of you can be listening to me and say, ah, man of God, wow, you can preach well. Life will not ask you whether you are a preacher. The way the devil hates me, if I didn't know what I'm telling you now, he would have killed me since. The devil doesn't want me to backslide, he wants me to die. So a thousand falls by your right, ten thousand by, by your side, ten thousand by your right side. Ah, ah, Pastor Alpha, you are still standing. I thought people in Kogi State don't rise after certain places. No, 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 no. I come from Zion. Ah, I thought your your father worshipped a shrine. So ah, I, I thought that the ladies in your place don't stay three years after they get married. I thought the men that come from from this state are irresponsible men say i don't know who they are but there's something about the knowledge of god is giving me confidence can anything good come out of nazareth yes sir yes sir please prophesy one minute to yourself i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings I live, I live, I live I live to praise your name I have no fear 
and lead me? Will I be prosperous? Will the church grow? The revelation of God is the antidote to fear. God is love and when love is perfected in you, it casts out fear. Lion of Judah My trust is in you Alpha and Omega My trust is in I put them on you. Make my trust in you. Sing it with faith in your heart. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. continue next week. Hold hands with someone and begin to blast in tongues. Let the realm of the spirit hear your voice. Go ahead and begin to pray. Don't ask anything. Just pray. But the people that do know their God 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 I know you are a merciful God I know you are a restoration God I know you are a lifting God I know you are a gracious God I know you are a mighty God Alpha, Omega. Hallelujah. Listen. If all you know about God is that He's a merciful God, that dimension itself can take you through your lifetime. If all you know about God is that He can restore, you will never cry when things leave you. If all you know about God is that he's the God of the sudden least. Five minutes to shame, he shows up. Lord, I know you. God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. Yeah. I know you was a miracle. shame of men he said have you ever had this proverb that in one day a woman gives birth lift your voice and pray lord i know you i know you as a miracle worker i know you as a destiny changer change my life change my story change my life my tears take away the shame from my life hallelujah we're going to sing that song 
one more time. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. That's the name that is called. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, my glory and the lifter of my But I know whom I have believed. There is something about God that I know. Where is your confidence? Seeing that you have no earthly father and mother. I know God. Where is your confidence? Seeing that you do not have any voice. Like Gideon. The least of your father's house. But there is a God who can lift me. Let me give you two prayer points to round up today's meeting. Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to say, Father, use my life to surprise my generation. Lift your voice and pray. Use my life as an object of praise. my life anoint me in an unusual way bless me financially in an unusual way lift me in an unusual way surprise the naysayers surprise those who have concluded about my life Number two, Lord, by your mercy, reveal yourself to me. Please pray. Everyone that asks it, receive it. Lord, I've been crying for marriage, for money, for prosperity, for anointing. But reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself. Pray. 
Just a few minutes and we're done. Shalabaroto Supriya Kadabana. life and destiny that you who is seen as a rejected stone they've concluded on you in your family they've even called you names that depict you as being a failure but in the name of Jesus out of that ashes of shame out of that ashes of disappointment out of that ashes of being a non-entity may the hand of the Lord pick you and shoot you like a star for everyone to see I'm praying I don't know who has concluded about your destiny men sit down and discuss you and they even laugh it's true that Jesus died but he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, while you are discussing my fall, yet I rise again. I command the grace for resurrection. Arise from shame. Arise from pain. Arise from disappointment. Hear me? Some of you are in ministry here and you've not seen the grace of God. And you are about to give up. Did God really call me? If he called me, why am I not getting the kind of apostles result? I bring you a word of hope. Be patient with God. Oh. Because in the midst of that ashes of pain and disappointment and two members is a transgenerational anointing. Don't be too quick to give up on God. God called you to the ministry of kingdom financing but as it is now you don't even have transport back after koinonia and every time you tell people they laugh at you brothers and sisters let me tell you god my god look what he's done with my life god is a lifter god is a blesser god is a surpriser don't let no devil sit down and compartmentalize you you are from this tribe you are from this place oh all you have is a diploma not a master's all you have is a degree not a PhD oh you don't have any godfather anywhere what rubbish is that have you not learned that with God with God with God without God some things are not possible but when he comes into the equation with God without God I cannot rise up without God I cannot prosper but with God when he holds your hands and said son let's go 
Don't be afraid of the giants that stand. No. Hear me. The Lord is comforting many of us. There are giants on everyone's mountain. You are not the only one with giants. When you watch people laugh, it's because they have learned how to keep Goliath down. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always. Successful people are not people without challenges. They are people who have mastered the art of victory. They know when to dance when others are crying. They know when to speak when others are quiet. Ah! They know when to cry before God when others are crying before men. They know when to sacrifice when others are withholding. They know when to stay when others are going. This ministry you see Thank God for the results that you see and hear. But it's not luck. There is something about God you know that your results can be predictable. There's no, ah, apostle, be careful. What if tomorrow there's no result? Which God are you talking about now? Return back to your homes tonight with an appetite to know God. You can use some time this weekend or at least before we continue next week. There are other things to teach you. But please go back and sit down and ask yourself, am I just a church goer? Am I just a prayer man? Am I just a Bible study Christian? Or do I know God? When challenges stand before me, what name of God do I know that I can call? When all my enemies surround me, and it's obvious they are going to defeat me. What do I know about God that turns the hand of things? Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son. Even your spirit until the world Sing it one more time and we are done for tonight. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us, for giving us your son. Living, living your spirit in your spirit. Your walk on earth is now. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray one prayer. Father, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to him. Ask him for a very great visitation by his word. Pray and cry for a visitation. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. too much, oh. too much, oh. excess love, oh. my God. We thank you for your love for this ministry. We thank you for your love. Thank you for access to light. Thank you for the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that you do in and through us. Lord, we thank you because tonight, again, you will prove yourself mighty in our midst. 
and we decree and we declare that Jesus himself will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have everyone around. Very quickly before we start, I want to appreciate. I'm told, um, where is she? I can't find her. Um, oh, Pastor Petrock's wife, Pastor Twain. God bless you. Let's honor her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She was covered somewhere and I cannot find her. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Very wonderful couple doing a great work for God in Mina. Influencing, contending. for kingdom relevance part two we started part one last week contending for kingdom relevance part two please i'd like to have your attention tonight i have a lot to share tonight every time i'm sharing something that i consider to be important my prayer as always is that we place the same value on those informations in this kingdom we are glorified not just by the will of God alone, but our access to the truths of the kingdom. Acts chapter 13, please, and verse 36. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Last week we started with that scripture as our text. Let me just open it from here. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. The Bible says, for David, reading from King James now, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. The verse of emphasis is the A part. It says, for David, after he had served his own generation, Amplified says that he served the purposes of God in his generation and we began to consider last week how that it is not enough to serve god alone you must serve god within the context of your generation please if you do not have the teaching do well to get it it is very important that um, you lay your hand on that teaching and listen to it and um, we stress the need to not only serve god but to serve God in our generation. It is possible for a man to serve God and not be relevant within the context of a generation. Are we together? That you can serve God with your all, well-meaning, sincere, but not be able to serve God in a way that inspires a generation. And I think my goal as a person, much more than being in ministry, is to be able to inspire a generation to love and to passionately pursue after God. If I'm able to achieve that in my lifetime, then I think I was able to contribute significantly to the program of God on earth. We must be able to inspire a generation. And that cannot happen outside of influence. I told us that to serve God profitably and to inspire a generation to do the same, we must contend for the requisite level of kingdom influence that it would take to represent the purpose of God on earth. If you are with me, say amen. amen. We took the A part last week. Just uh, we have, I have five points for you here. And point number one was that you must know God. Are we still together? Dust your notes. Let's look at it. Let's get to work. Daniel 11.32. The Bible says the B part. It says, but the people. Daniel 11.32. But the people that do know their God. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says that they shall be strong and shall do exploits. There is a relationship, as we established last week, between the knowledge, the personal revealed knowledge of God and your depth and degree of exploits. And we said according to Psalm 24 and verse 6, just doing a quick recap, 
how that Jacob for us is the scriptural portrait of what God's idea of seeking him is. That every time God says we should seek him, he doesn't leave us to guess how to seek him. He exemplifies um, his desire, his intention, and how his pattern of pursuing him in the person Jacob. The Bible says there is a generation that should seek the Lord in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together? And so we'll take from there point number two. Now, please pay attention, pay attention. When the word of God is coming, Satan is also at work to steal from people um, the implanted word, the word that is able to profit them. You don't just rise in life by your desire and intentions alone. It is the quality of the word that you receive within your spirit. The second key in contending for generational relevance the second key is that you must be transformed write it down transformation is the second key we're going to be dealing with tonight that no man is able to influence a generation please play the strings for me No man is able to influence a generation effectively, effectively, except they are transformed. Are we together? Yes, please. So it matters that we are transformed. And the Bible says in Romans, when you read from verse um, chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, um, I beseech thee, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and be not conformed. Listen very carefully to this word. The word world, there is the Greek word aeon. It means the mindset, the stronghold, the thinking pattern that comes with the age. It says, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transformation is a key. If you want to sustain a position where you are able to influence a generation, you must be transformed. In this sense, to be transformed means to have a superior belief system. Write it down, please. Let's deal with belief systems a bit. It is the one reason why many of us may never be used by God in a very notable way. We are very well-meaning, we are very sincere, but we have been unable to sustain a superior belief system. Everyone say belief system. Say it again, belief system. Believe me, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if you want to serve God profitably, especially in the 21st century, you must sustain a belief system that is higher than the cultural background, the limitations that you have come from, the territorial background that um, comes with your geography, etc. You will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom efficiently if you do not sustain a superior belief system. Let's discuss this a bit. Now, many of us come from backgrounds where because of our our upbringing we have sustained thinking patterns that may be well-meaning but are not consistent with the ways of god are we together i have taught us extensively on mindsets we have discussed strongholds um, but then it will never be too much to continue to teach us until we bend to that formation that the word seeks to bring in us with respect to transformation your belief system must be higher than your background your belief system must be higher than your failures. Your belief system must be higher than your current level of exposure if you want to contend for relevance. There are men of God, women of God, and churches whose relevance cannot be outside certain geographic regions because although they are anointed, although they love God, the biases that come with their belief systems, be it cultural be it um, sociological the biases that come with their belief system will not afford them the opportunity to expand to be global in perspective 
to maintain or sustain a superior belief system does not mean compromising on your kingdom standards but it means to have the flexibility to be able to adjust to approach life from a global view though from a kingdom perspective you must be global in your mindset as i'm talking now there are people following from different nations and you must be able to communicate thrice in such a way and manner that in spite of their cultural limitations in spite of their sociological differences you are able to present the purposes of christ in a way that is understood and received by them anyone who cannot do that will not be relevant it's as simple as that is god speaking to us the mistake that many of us make is that when we start out something in life we keep scrounging around for people who relate with our geographic experiences as though they are the only ones we are called and sent to are we together i i come from plateau state for instance and i can start ministry and my entire the design of the ministry was only for those who come within my geographic context anyone who is Igbo or yoruba or from ghana or from australia will not be blessed by that service because the program was so designed to only minister to whoever has my kind of geographic context that's a very dangerous understanding you can be anointed but then God will not anoint you to be able to bless people because the limitation, you do not sustain a superior belief system. Your paradigm has not been so constructed such that you can minister to people of all races and communicate Christ. Are we blessed? It's the reason why many businesses don't rise beyond certain levels in Africa. Is because is the reason why many ministries do not go out of their localized environment it like i said it doesn't mean to compromise on your standards but to sustain the flexibility to know that you are dealing with a generation that has come from a backlog of belief systems and that in as much as you define what you want to be your primary belief system you must have the flexibility to be able to adjust to different cultures are we together to adjust to different doctrinal approaches to spirituality without being compromised i preach in different churches regardless of their doctrinal beliefs i am able to maintain my convictions but to be able to navigate through the tides of doctrinal and denominational differences such that you can preach christ in a way and a manner that does not end up offending and destroying the people you are ministering to a transformed mind satan prefers you healed in fact satan prefers you anointed without a transformed mind because he knows the oil will remain small for as long as the vessel is small are we together the increase in the oil is not dependent on god's will alone it's dependent on the size of the vessel when the woman was saying the oil is small the oil was hearing her and you can imagine the oil saying, I am not small. You have only hosted me in a small vessel. And the prophet said, I know where the problem is. Go and borrow vessels. You don't need another oil. The oil you have has infinite potentials. Expand capacity for that oil to find expression. That's why you see that some of us that are carrying the anointing of certain fathers seem to look more anointed than them. We are not more anointed than them. The anointing just came on a superior mindset. So it gave it more room for expression are we together a prophet who never had the opportunity to go to school a prophet who never had the opportunity to learn a number of languages a prophet who never had the opportunity to travel outside of nigeria outside of his physical environment there is a perspective that even the knowledge of god cannot break so he will communicate christ with the limitation of that perspective if you come now and receive that same anointing with a renewed mind you now give the anointing a broader perspective to be able to manifest itself you need a transformed mind brothers and sisters you don't just need anointing on your head you need a transformed mind the law of the mind is a principle that i have taught us again and again i watch people did you know i honestly watch people and many times i feel sad i don't even know how to start praying for them because i know that 
the prayer I want to pray for them will not be answered. The, 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 the faultiness of their belief system will necessitate that that answer never arrives to their life. Are we together? There are people who, they may be attacked by demons, yes. They may be doing a lot of things, but the kind of result they are crying for requires a certain level of renewal and transformation and because they have not contended for that level of renewal you know that that prayer will never be answered in their life and it's a very frustrating thing for a man of god because you 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 can't tell somebody who is crying and saying ah apostle can god show up for me in this area you already know that that thing will not be answered as far as that person remains at that level of thinking that prayer will never be answered in his life it's a very difficult thing that's why sometimes when i'm counseling people i just pray for them because it's very difficult you look at the person talking and you see the backlog of limiting belief systems that empower the gates of hell over the life of the individuals and then you see the the intention the sincerity the purity of their heart you know what they desire you see how true the desire is but you know that that desire will never come to pass that way except they contend for a superior belief system. You look at people and you know that this guy is already pegged to his loyalty to cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs that are not kingdom compliant. And you know that as far as this international context of ministry that this brother or sister is desire of... You, of you can have visions in the realm of the spirit of yourself having branches all around you will not go anywhere many of us do not have the level of adjustment that allows us to be global in our approach are we together now just because you see a lady look like this or a guy look like this it, it, it can get you so offended to a point that you cannot communicate Christ to the person. And now that's the person who wants 10,000 members. You cannot have 10,000 members who all believe your context, your cultural context or doctrinal context. That means you are going to create a system of bias in that church that will be clear to a certain group of people that you are not sympathetic to them. And very soon there will be all versions of revolt coming from their frustrations. It is not God nor his inability to reach us. But that our level of transformation has not ascended enough to be able to capture that dimension of spiritual possibility that we seek. If God is speaking to you, say Amen. amen. Many people want finances. And they think all there is to finance is his business. You hear them pray and fast. They even write, oh God, I'm trusting you for one, one million per month. And they have no respect for money. They just call it one. Whereas their thinking level, notice, even financially, look at the, the figure that recycles around your life. It's a reflection of the only amount your mind can host. If they bless you higher than that, your thinking will reduce it to a circle. Some people will never go past 100,000. Give them 10 million. In two weeks, it has returned back. Because your mindset is like a calibrator. Like a thermostat of an iron. It pegs at a level of thinking and stops there. There are pastors, the moment they cross 100 members, something must happen in that church and return the members back to 100. It's, it's not about any bias for growth. It's because they have not yet contended through transformation to the level of leadership that can make them to be able to pastor and lead that number of people. Before you cry that heaven releases something to you, find out whether you have created space through a transformed mind to host that dimension of spiritual reality. Otherwise, you are going to waste resources. Are we blessed? transformation i've taught us that you are a reflection of what you think about now please don't think this is some positive thinking teaching no matter who you are you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom above and beyond your level of understanding of god of life and the transformation that your mind gives god you see the danger of serving God without a transformed mind 
is that because some measure of anointing will still be on your life though you are not transformed the limitation of your mindset will ride along with the anointing and make people think it's the anointing that is making you behave that way if koinonia is not excellent for instance you will think that the kind of anointing on joshua selman is what makes for you to not be excellent so now i can use my imperfection in the area of excellence to mean just because the sick are getting healed through my life it must be the anointing that is making me trivialize the need for excellence and when you receive the anointing from my life you will also receive the impartation of the limitation to a life of excellence and so you see people mentor after mentor impartation after impartation and the lapse that lack of transformation brings will continue moving and we will make it look as though it was god or it came with the anointing no a transformed mind will produce a transformed life a transformed life will produce a destiny that is worthy of emulation nobody will emulate you just because you think you are born again there are many people who are worthy of being listened to but not worthy of being followed that you are list that people are listening to you listening to you does not mean that they can follow you it takes more than good preaching to be emulated they must look at the construction of your belief systems to be superior enough to be worthy of them to mold their life after your belief you're not just going to come with one greek and hebrew word one suit and one watch one car and one house and then believe that people will follow you you cannot inspire a generation that way your belief system must be so superior and it will tell on the kind the quality and the frequency of results that you get and then it will cause someone to say look i will follow after you as you follow after christ nobody just follows you because there are all kinds of men of god moving up and down yoking young people in the name of sons and daughters you must follow me but the son and the daughter is seeing a, an inferior life where the life you are living does not reflect the dimension god is showing him yet you are still pressing him and saying you must follow me and he said mr man i will follow you if you transit to reflect how my future should be Be transformed you can never truly rise above your mindset i meet people all the time i travel to several places and most times the people relate with me within the context of their cultures and i am grateful to god for teaching me the ability to have flexibility in belief systems otherwise i don't know how many churches how many regions i would hurt with statements not knowingly i would hurt with behavioral patterns you see reinhard bonke and all these evangelists when they come to africa they try to look for african attires and wear they try to learn thank you and god bless you even in yoruba you think they like it like that they are trying to create a system that makes them look sympathetic to that territory so that their voice will be heard are we together you must sustain a superior belief system you can go to a church where they don't allow you to move up and down around the pulpit do you have a superior belief system to stand and confirm with the way that church believes in the operation and still teach christ there are churches that you may not be allowed to pray in tongues openly while you are preaching don't just say me i'm like this so you don't know my encounter with the holy ghost when if we everywhere I, they must know that i'm an addict then you are you are going to remain small you will keep impressing the small people who think like you and never become global in your perspective is god blessing someone you must be flexible we are excellent people but we are not fools you see during the miracle service sometimes someone is healed and maybe you are taking the testimony and the woman cannot speak english you are not going to yoke this woman and say when is she going to learn english just because she didn't have the opportunity to learn english you yoke her no are we together we are global but we are in zaria madam speak house are we together speak what you can speak and let someone interpret it are you getting what i'm saying now yes but at the same time 
I'm not going to travel to Lagos or travel outside this country and go and I'm speaking and I'm giving examples that can only be understood by people in Zaria. Many of you carry your background everywhere. God is saying depart from, from AI to a land flowing with milk and honey. We carry that background. You go somewhere and stand and raise a song that only you know. And then you are watching and seeing the... I clash that symbol. And they are watching you and say, what in the world is going on here? And you will be so impressed with yourself until you are no longer invited. They have a board meeting and say, no, don't ever bring him again. Is God speaking to us? You must be kingdom in your, your, your approach but you must be global in your perspective. When you want to become a voice to your generation, you must understand that you are not a voice to Yoruba people. You are not a voice to Igbo people. You are not a voice to Hausa people. You are not a voice to Africans. You are a voice to as many as God will call. And your, the way you behave must be able to adjust in a way and manner that of course you will be sympathetic to the soil where you are domiciled in, but at the same time be flexible enough for people of all races and cultures to be able to find a place for themselves. A global approach to life. A superior mindset. I say it with all humility. Most, most men of God usually are invited within certain regions and certain contexts and no more if i'm a northerner chances are that all the churches that should invite me to preach should only be northern churches why because i relate i'm more sympathetic to their sociological context but that's not the case there is nowhere in this nation and outside of this nation that God has taken me to, that have not been received with joy, because I have mastered the art of upgrading my understanding, my paradigm, and my approach to life in a way and manner that is able to help me communicate Christ effectively. I've gone to places where an interpreter is needed. I just stand up and I think the guy is coming to tell me the time and then I just see him with a mic too. Whatever I say, he repeats it. Or automatically I know that, okay, we have to be wise in that approach. How the power of God will move with this kind of limitation, you have to find a way to walk through it. Greet the man, smile at him, and the people are already laughing because they know that that's not how you preach usually. So they are extra blessed because of the fortitude to make that adjustment. Are you seeing that now? People already know how you are in your default state. So when you go out of your way to make that adjustment, they, they, it's a show of spiritual maturity that you have the ability to have revolted and say, you invited me, please, Mr. Ma, walk out of this stage. But you are able to limit yourself to create a context that allows you to minister Christ. Powerful revelation. Be transformed. Be transformed. Brothers and sisters, be transformed. Live where you are. Don't let your background, don't let your background cause you to think in a way and manner that you think everyone is from your village. And every time you see people behave in a way that is not consistent with your cultural context, you are tempted to insult them. No, sir. No, sir. There are things you cannot do as a northerner. You know, northerners, we are fairly conservative in our approach to life. There are things that you may not be able to do normally. Are we together now? But then you go to certain regions and you see them do it. There are places that, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm somebody who is very organized and excellent and I, I, I like things in decency and order. But there are churches that you can go to that... Um, just a young guy from the choir comes to just tap your back as if you are his mate and gives you mic. Say, this, this one is nice. And you can try and say, ah, Mr. Go on Facebook. Are you crazy? Is there something wrong? I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No, sir. You have to have the flexibility to understand. That gentleman is not rude. He is only a victim of the context of his culture. That's why many Nigerians go abroad and look like thieves. They carry all kinds of siren and move around. And people say, who is this guy? He is a man of God. He just drops down in a hot afternoon with a suit and a collar and a big chain and stands. And while he's talking, the people cannot connect. Not because they are bad. It's strange to them. And then he begins to speak. Ah, I, I hope, I hope um, you are using generator. And they say, no, no, they don't take light here. And you embarrass yourself and you are spiritual. You are born again. 
but the limitation of now listen some of you are laughing but what i'm saying is very serious the limitation of your context there are homes you go to as a leader they don't eat on the the the, the chairs the sofas there they all go to the dining table are we together now and one day god is going to open doors for you and then you go there and they sit there and say what are we doing there say we're going you say say for what me now i hardly eat how many times do i eat in a week i'm always fasting so what so what you must sustain a superior belief system brothers and sisters hear me remember that i'm on a project to helping you becoming to, to become men and women of influence not only spiritual people you can persecute me now because you don't understand what you are yet becoming until you get to the future and you turn back you say apostle thank you thank you you're not going to carry yesterday into tomorrow and I'll, i want tomorrow to clap for you for bringing yesterday into it no seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says um let us lay aside every weight weights are not seen necessarily there are backlog of information and mindset belief systems that may not be appropriate for the context that god is taking you are we together superior belief systems there are churches and i say that with due honor please i don't mean to be sarcastic there are churches where women are not given any regard for any reason including the pastor's wife and the pastor's wife is comfortable with it because she grew within that context so she doesn't expect anything so doing what i just did to appreciate pastor petrock's wife a board can call a meeting and say no let's sit down something is going on in this church what the, they've never clapped for us and a woman not a, a woman so what if she's a pastor's wife context of culture so you will go somewhere and find out that they are introducing people you, the anointing is boiling in you for the mic to be given so that you preach and they are saying let's take our time and appreciate our mother in the lord she said this and you are saying what kind of carnal believers are these no you must have the accommodation because not a thing may be weakness to you but it's not weakness in another culture there is a culture where a father and his child cannot eat in the same plate it's impossible under no circumstance there is a culture where a father eating with his child is proof of love so you don't go somewhere and see a son eating with his father and even feeding the father and you say my god what taboo is this let's be careful preserve your belief systems but have the flexibility to give the world you live in a chance to know christ give people a chance give people a chance don't turn everyone to look like you give people a chance you must have that flexibility hold a superior mindset that allows you to be able to accommodate people's limitations or people's context sometimes it's not a limitation they are just different than you that's all are we together next week is my birthday i thank god for it i don't celebrate birthdays listen listen i never saw any of my loved ones celebrating birthdays in fact sometimes my parents used to forget their birthdays we just remind them and say ah it's your birthday they say oh glory be to god i came from a background where celebrating celebrating things at all and then because of my approach to life my standards to life on many fronts are very high so even when i've done something that is worthy of commendation i sometimes find myself rejecting any any drive for commendation to say look we need to aspire i'm, I'm a very visionary person once you do something is done glory be to god let's face forward what is the next thing are you seeing that some come from families where they come back with results 17th position and they cut chicken for you 17th 17th position and you eat chicken are we together now god calls you with that person to work together in ministry you take first and your father says why do you have one in punctuality as if he didn't see first position i'm not concerned about first what is first what is first 
and someone is taking 17th and the father will say i never went to school thank you court chicken those two people working together if they don't create a system of accommodating their limitation there will be a lot of problem and the holy spirit will be blamed for the all of them are spiritual remember this guy who says the holy spirit that trained me that way this one will say the holy spirit is a spirit of celebration with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation this one will say one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind all of them is still scripture they are bringing but their belief systems are different This guy tells himself, I want to buy myself a birthday gift of a watch. He said, what kind of thing is that? Do you waste money and celebrate yourself? Are you the only one doing this and that? And you see that those people can be anointed. And then they never go global. Imagine that I am such a leader. And I see you celebrating something. I say, Pastor Alpha, why are you celebrating your son? He said, well, we just glory. I say, what nonsense is that? There are souls perishing. There are lives. There are mission agencies. How can you spend 50,000 on your child? Is he the only one that is coming? What kind of attitude is that? Now imagine what I'm presenting. And it's as soon as I talk to him, I lift someone out of a wheelchair. So you may use the result of the wheelchair to think it's the Holy Spirit that taught me how to be that. And then this guy on the other hand keeps celebrating everything and finishes the church money. God gives them 100,000. The 100,000 goes on celebration. Are we together? Today is his day of being born again spiritually. Tomorrow is his, the first day he encountered a book that transformed his mind. Next week is the first day he met his wife. Not anniversary, the day he met his wife to celebrate. And all is the church that pays for it. And at the end of it, his life looks loud and carnal and some members say something is wrong with our pastor. Are you seeing why members sit down and group themselves according to their mindsets and create whatever trouble their mindsets can identify? Have you noticed that they don't sing local songs here? This one says, have you noticed that it's just American? We don't sing American songs. All those things are reflections of limiting beliefs. Are we together? I once gave someone 10,000 naira to buy something. What he was going to buy, there is 2,000 of it. I gave him the money intentionally because I wanted to prove to him that his mindset was not yet upgraded. I gave him the money. I said, buy it. I, he didn't even, even the 2,001, he didn't buy it. Because he just felt, how can I carry this and do this? But it was a gift. I just gave him money to do it. May God deliver us from the limitations of an inferior thinking. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Two people come. Happy come. Stand here. Chion, stand here. These are two different people. Listen. Coming from two different cultural contexts. Do you know that the danger of not having an upgraded mindset works twofold? Number one. This lady now, because of her just an example eh, my dear an inferior mindset that she may be sustaining listen carefully it can make this lady to fall into the hands of a bad man because intrinsically because of her mindset she has believed i am not good enough so that low level thinking of not knowing you are wonderfully and fearfully made can make her fall into the hands of a wicked man who will kick her like a football every day are we together now? Because she already sustains a mindset that says, I am weak. It's a privilege. Dangerous. Then, I wish it's another lady. You go back. Another lady come. Stand here. This other lady, because of her awareness of how inferior her mind is, will become aggressive in her approach to life in a way to prove that she's not, she's not just a... a a low level lady are you seeing that two of them are behaving it, the same mindset is informing different behaviors this one now just settles for just anything in life i don't mean it has to be married just anything in life someone can come and bully her and just collect her phone collect anything and you don't have a voice this other person you come don't think i'm not you know i'm did that i'm one of you i'm all those ranting is as a result of an intrinsic low level esteem 
that she's having and she uses aggression to fight it. Both people need deliverance. From insensitive aggression and from giving yourself cheap to life. There is a mindset. Is God speaking to us? I'm dwelling here because if you understand what I'm teaching you, my life changed. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, and I say it with all humility. I never went out of Zaria to be renewed and come back. So wherever you are, it's enough for the transformation to come. All this lie of saying, I must go to Dubai first and America. Exposure is important, don't get me wrong. But he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You can start from where you are and say, look, we came from a family where when rain falls, the, we don't know what part is according to the, the, the heaviness of the rain. That's where it determines which location rain will fall, um, the water will drop in. But from there, you can start thinking, in the name of Jesus, I will be a blessing to nations. In the name of Jesus, I'm upgrading my mind by the Spirit. I have Gary. That's all I have in my wardrobe. But in the name of Jesus, I will feed nations. While you are doing that, we live in a very sarcastic world that will want to intimidate you. You don't have to revolt in weakness. But at the same time, you maintain a healthy perspective constructed by the word of God. That's why it's important to know the word of God. You need to know what God has said about you. So that you will not listen to what God did not say about you. When you know what God has said about you, it doesn't matter what another person says. Is God speaking to us? Which of these two are you? As a result of limiting beliefs. There are many of us who have the call of God upon our lives. But as you are like this, you would dare not say yes to the call. Because you've never seen anyone rise in your background. The, the, most, the most educated person has SSC in your family. SSC, that's all. And so God says, I'm going to use you and you are like, ah, it's not for people like us. Oh God, I will gladly be an usher in whatever church it is. And God says, no. According to my predetermined counsel, you are the one I will use. Is God speaking to us? Brothers and sisters, I bring you a word. As limited as you look, you are still the one God is talking about. When God talks about an army that will rise listen very carefully when god talks about men and women who will rise and shake the gates of hell he's not talking about someone somewhere i have always maintained the resolve that anything good i see in the bible i say god is talking about me listen if I didn't have a superior mindset, I wouldn't be in ministry now. Because our world is full of sarcastic people who will bully you psychologically. They will make it look like, what is the basis of doing ministry? What is this? What is that? Where will you get money from? To hell with the devil. I came to preach to someone that in the name that is above all names, whatever God has said you will become, you must become. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai. in my life replace the old ideas let your kingdom come ah, let your kingdom reign let your kingdom reign listen if you will allow God change your belief system I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can stop where you will go to. They will just keep criticizing while you are rising. Like an infant of fire. No devil will stop you. Listen, let me teach you something. 
Be inspired, be challenged, but never intimidated. Don't let any man born of a woman stand and bully you emotionally, whether because of finances or because of looks or because of education. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every voice you have been listening to that has made you to reject the purposes of God in your life, I silence that voice over your life now. Sit down. Ejimi is here. Ask him when the Lord began to speak to us about what the messages will do around the world. I didn't sit down saying from Zaria to the whole world, Haba, is it people like us? When there are great men like the Oyedekos and the Papa Ie Adeboes, I honor them, I respect them, but not to the detriment of my revelation of God. Come on now, please. Don't love Joshua Selman so much that you look down on yourself and your destiny and your anointing. Love him and give him the honor that is due, but say, I'm coming too. There is an anointing upon my life. No, sir. And sometimes we pastors love it. We love it when people demean themselves to prove that we are great. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There is no good leader that will not want to see his people rise up and even be greater than him. We started that message and I announced to them, I said, the Lord said we should not sell any one of the tapes. That I told him, I said, I saw the message on the wings of the spirit going everywhere. Ejimi was the one who designed the logo of ENI. Ask him, he would tell you. Ejimi almost cried designing that logo. I couldn't design, but I told him, you must design what I saw in the spirit. He would do this. I said, no, sir. This is not what I saw. Adjust this. He was so tired. I said, this logo you are seeing is going to the nations. Design it well. Ask him. I saw the vision. I said, your hand, you must find a way of seeing what God showed me. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Is it because I came from a background where we don't have light? Is it because our house was made with mud house? My mind is not mud mind. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, I have proven with my life that you can break any barrier. It's true. God has used me as a statement to prove to you that this race, Ba, my brother, if God holds your hand, let the people keep talking. You just move. You just move and watch with shock and wonder. Who has lied to you that just because you read this or you have this, you cannot be great in life? Who told you you cannot contend for a position of influence? You go to bed in the night and see a massive crusade. You get up and say, no, no, it's Reinhard Bonke's crusade. God says, no, no, it's you. And while he's talking, he says, ah, God, when, when so, so, so man of God has not even done that, what is your business with the man of God's call? Ah, even so come, 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 Lord Jesus. That which you have revealed, let it come. When Koinonia was about to start, I was in a retreat and I saw the visions and I was sharing it with them. One of the things that I love, you hear me talk a lot about Ejimi. One of the things that I love about him is because he's always a victim of my revelations. When God shows me like this, I call him and just keep pounding it on him. And sometimes I honestly see that he, he wants to be honorable to say, Apostle, look, I don't doubt you. I'm a man of faith too, but ah, will it happen? You see why it's dangerous to be close to me? Because when you are listening, you can't say it won't happen. Because automatically you have become an antichrist. And any antichrist in my life must go. You are here right now. You trek from where you were here. But God has given you the name of your foundation. And God already told you that you will be spending as much as a billion dollars per year. And you are saying, God, please, 
uh, I, I, I give that vision to a Jimmy and God says, why do you believe to me? Brothers and sisters, I bring before you an arrogant society that does not know the power of God. They don't know that God is the lifter of men. So when God shows you things, you go to them for accreditation and they use their limitation to say, God has never moved this way. No. No. There is no way I cannot go to. No. There is, there is, there is, there is, and, and, and I'm not just saying this just because God has brought some measure of results. It's been like that. Those who know me from day one, it's not boasting. I'm not talking of vain arrogance. That's not what I'm talking about. A settled confidence. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, persuaded that one day I will not beg for bread. That one day the nations will gather together. Right from those days when we were sitting on the ground, I used to describe the international headquarters of this ministry that I saw about 47 flags of nations. I used to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it and hear sarcastic people speak. You, God said you will marry a pastor. God doesn't have any woman to give his son. And he will come and give a village girl like you. And God says, that's right. His village as I want. So that the excellency of power may be of God and not of men. Can you pray in tongues just for one minute? And say, Lord... I, I reject any belief system that is not consistent with your ways and your word. Yes, you are able to take me high. Yes, you are able to lead me to the place of destiny. Praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Abada katola bakata senema kataya labas. Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you find your destiny through the word, then the first limitation, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. The first thing to change in your life is not your shoe. The first thing to change in your life is not your, uh, what they call this thing, your hair. The first thing to change in your life is not your toothpaste. The first thing to change in your life is not your room. The first thing to change, second only to your encounter with the Spirit, is your mind. Remain with the dirty clothes and let your mind keep changing. And see whether your mind will not buy new clothes and change that body. We, we spend time trying to live a fake life, buying every other thing and starving our minds. There are pastors who start ministry. They know nothing about church growth, no anointing, no nothing. They buy the most expensive suits, expensive watches, expensive chair and room, and they preach to themselves. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb! Glory to the Father! You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, 
you are seated on the throne. That's a song you will be singing when your mind causes your life to change. Let me tell you this. Quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just had turkey. God bless you with your turkey. My turkey is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand a transformed mind. I tell you this. Your mind is a gate. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cards and getting angry and say, Jimmy, is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, you mean life can be this cheap? I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know he took me there. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny. I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Mm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine. Huh? And then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorified God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable write it down key number three extreme value those who will be representatives of the purposes of god for their generation please write it down are not only men and women who will know god they are not only men and women who will be transformed your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded. When you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. 
it is your difference that decides your rewards. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are seeking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men seek for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with myrrh. They will never come empty-handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them, what can you do? And they say, I can do this. My next question is, how good are you? I say, no, but God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. Say, no problem, here and there. No. Oh, you are, you, are, you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce. When it is truly seen, it is sought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine that he just came here and a woman calls him to give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. <laughs> hallelujah the reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses when your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you people will ignore even what is obvious to seek you you go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes but the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. Your dignity notwithstanding. If you can make the meat go home. It's as simple as that. And the person making it is not in a hurry. It's not in a hurry. If you have a, I didn't force you, you can. And you stand, you complain but remain. You insult but remain. This will be my last time, but remain. It's your last time until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back. When your enemies join to seek you, you are valuable. They search around for alternatives and don't find and say, look, we have to just make do with what is available. When God wants to honor a man, he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere. At least not in that fashion. A few years ago, a man was praying for me, a great man of God. I went to see him and saw into his life. And then he looked at me and just laid his hands on, on my head and said, Oh God, create a problem around his region that only him can solve. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Just slapped my head and said, <laughs> oh, If that prayer is answered for your business, you will be afraid. That's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry they say this mama must be using a charm one of our mothers here gave a testimony recently when i when 
she she was telling me about the testimony i will not mention the details but it's a breakthrough that god gave her that it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if god gives you you have reached december <laughs> even though you are in april you have reached december you can start laughing see thou a man any man see thou a man diligent in his business there is a promise that he shall stand before the great he shall not stand before mean men let me tell you why you are standing before mean men it's not because there are powers fighting you alone there may be an element of that but let me tell you your your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you whether as a man of god i've challenged you i've challenged all the people here the leaders here and you're a man of god here i'm challenging you don't just stop at the level of sharing and say oh the power of god is moving it's moving then one lady now starts rolling around that, that, that you won't go far that way you get to a church where is the ushers that are producing that kind of result they can't invite you you must stay with him let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. Remember my teaching on true riches. That, that you have true riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Angote now, what do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility, you will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I have gone to. You say, may God bless you. They just say, amen. Because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? Did she not come with gifts that money could buy? I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life that will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996. Till tomorrow, he didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something less here. And you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when you can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think he was yesterday night while i was about to sleep and i was so blessed i said kai this man is anointed i truly see why people seek for him value you see 
if I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are, you see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one naira, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira and you are there saying to apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand that. They would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has worked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will rise will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people say, Ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is, is such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you will pick. Abba, for 18 years, I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study sit down and learn the average sermon as a man of god takes serious time i preach an average of two to three sermons every week you think it just drops from heaven just because i told god gave me the topic he didn't teach me what to say what gives you topic and gives you wisdom you go and sit down and research and learn Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, the blind guy. I didn't even know he was blind. Went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the Spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing, and I said, what is this? We are on our way to Kano. Well, just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Value. But someone whose eyes, are, whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for God to do this. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent here, let me advise you. Especially for your, male, your, your sons. Start training them to be responsible early in life. Sometimes this dashing, excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy. Pain is a language that can teach people. Money is not the only thing you should give people. You can give them advice. They don't like advice. 
They don't like counseling, but they like something they can hold and exchange immediately. Be valuable. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself that whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia, and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with Hausa people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. Entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your note. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level... I have not gone to bed and at the level you are, you are sleeping. It's a sign that you are far from influence. I have food to eat. I can eat whatever I want to eat. But then you are still awake. Shakatos kabarakatos. New dimensions, oh God. New levels, oh God. I come back from a meeting. I came back from police academy. They gave me this, their police, uh, this uh, police thing. Two of it. That thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. You can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you. And then you wonder, why don't people listen to me again? They say, because you stop being relevant. You see, let me tell you this. As we are sitting now, if someone starts shouting under the anointing, you won't be impressed because you have already seen that standard in me. There will be an appetite in you for what more. When that happens in another meeting, you'll be surprised. But what will bless, it will only bless visitors. But you who is in Koinonia here now, once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around, you don't turn and say, hey, what is happening? No. When you have hit a standard, that standard, people get used to it and that's all. You must strive for something more. That's why when they say holy, 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 when they lift their face, they see another dimension of God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. If you are who was, you are in trouble. If you are who is, you will soon be in trouble. There must also be something to come. That was, is, and is to come dimension must work in your life. If I only know he who was, businessman who was, apostle who was, what are you doing now relative to what God is doing? And what are you doing tomorrow? Will our little children need you? Or will you be so irrelevant? They say, I don't know why you people like this man. I'm, I'm telling you things that many of you will not hear easily. Value. I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruits of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power, you will stand and wonder 
and say, Lord, is this what you can do? They will come and find you with a big bed, but you are crying on the ground. And they say, sir, you should be lying down on this bed. He say, no, don't worry. I'm lying down on the ground because what God has done for me. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Listen. This is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere. And all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. If a professor is still reading, writing articles, doing researches, and you just come out, a, a degree right now is almost like, I, I told you about a place that I went to, that the receptionist had two MSCs abroad. Receptionist. Gone are the days where you brag and say, look, I have a degree in A, I have another degree in B. And someone will come who is 18 years and say, I have four degrees. And you stand there feeling foolish. But there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place, that can take away shame. Brothers and sisters, shame and reproach can leave a man. When you stay with God that he put something upon your life, financial shame can leave your life. Sociological shame can leave your life. You never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine. Let your mind add to your beauty. Let your value add to your beauty. Oh, you are too short. You are too tall. You are too fat. You are too slim. Value can make you fit for everything. A door that will not open because they will say you are too tall, value will reduce you to enter. A door that will say you are too short, value will make you taller to enter. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrows. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the pain. You have made them yours. I praise to the King. You have taken all my tears. You have taken all lamentation. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. Listen, God wants to make this song someone's reality. That you turn and say, Lord, look at how you took away shame from my family. Lord, look at the embarrassment. I'm a man of God. I am called into ministry, but it's like I am not called. But look what you have put upon my life today. I have become Beulah and Hephzibah, the desire of nations. Look what you have done with my family. My mother that was nothing, my brother that was nothing. They kept saying, can anything good come out of my family? But Lord, look what you have done. You have taken me from a donkey. Fanny. value sit down let me give you four four things that you should cry for there are seven of them but I'll give you four <laughs> they are called the true riches of the kingdom I want to teach you what buys money what buys influence influence is a product it is bought with something I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one, the capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination, revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. 
For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. Mm. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying, 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 this is the way. People prosper in life because the Lord is their shepherd. And if the sheep cannot hear the voice, you will go where the lion is. The forest is a place that is open for every other animal, not just the sheep. It's the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness. Otherwise, the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up. The ability to hear the voice of God correctly is value. Let me give you the fourth one. I have a series. That's why I'm not giving you all of it. There's a series, Two Riches. Before the end of the year, we'll teach it. So that you will stop chasing money. You will chase what buys money. I taught you last week. Please come, sir. Give me this water. Come here, Jimmy. Look at this. If this is... I have, let, let me bring out some money. This is a product called a bottle of water. Is that true? I don't know how much they sell this, but you just hold it. Now, if a Jimmy wants this, he needs to have something that can buy it. So if I give you money, you have bought this product. But when you want this, what buys it? If this is the product you want, what buys it? A job? <laughs> Business? No. Two riches is the name of the money that buys money. Are we together? It's true. Whoever possesses light must possess this. Whoever possesses understanding. He said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Business or job are simply physical platforms to give the two riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded. That's all they are. So if all you have and all you are looking for is this, you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever. That's what is happening to many of us now. Anywhere money is, is where you are running to. The money itself is running somewhere. Find out where it is running to. Don't just follow money. Follow where money is going. This money that is running away is going somewhere. Where is it going? It's going to those who possess true riches. Either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place. When God wants to prosper men, he doesn't give them money. It's an insult if God gives you money. Why will he God give you money? God gives you two riches and compels a territory to identify with that. And you will have this and not know what to do with it. And find out that this is the least of your concerns. He will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm. Why do people want to hear you? It's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket. Value. Are we together now? Thank you. You drop it in the offering basket or something. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. The last of them is the anointing. Let me tell you this. The highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing. The highest. Higher than all others that have called. The anointing is the highest 
spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth. In heaven, the anointing is not the highest. Because we see in the throne room, all the people in the throne room, we don't hear the mention of anointing. So there are things higher than the anointing in heaven. But on earth, the anointing, the valued cherub and the rest, all of them, they don't live in the throne room. They visit the presence of God with the anointing. That means there is something those 24 elders have. There is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing. We will find out. But for now, as given to us, it says the yoke, it shall come to pass in that day. Listen carefully. That the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When God wants to use men on earth, he gives them the highest value, the anointing. He can give them in the secret place and they come out in the open and life starts following them. Where did this shepherd boy, David, smelling sheep but with the anointing? Don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing. He has true riches. It may not look like it. That's why those who seek God, people will say, don't see God, don't see God. Balance. What they mean balance is leave God. Don't leave God though. You leave the anointing, you suffer in this life. Takes the anointing. The rich are oppressed too. The poor are oppressed. Money cannot buy that. Money can buy the salvation of your soul. Money can buy Panadol. But it cannot cast away demons. So whoever has that ability. Ah. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrow. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all limitations. You have made them yours. Highs praise to the King. Koinonia, listen to me. Do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here? You are not just receiving information. There is a transfer, like you do internet transfer. Something is coming on your life. You see, as you keep receiving that, a time will come, you will come out. My brother, my sister, regardless of all other limitations in your life, you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you. And you look at their chariots full of gold and silver. And they say, let it be a privilege. Someone's prayer point of 10 years. Your, your savings plan of 20 years. The anointing brings it in one day. Let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time. And I say this with due respect and honor. Over 70% of those who partner with this ministry are not here. I don't know them. Are we together? Our ministry is full of, a lot of young people. And God is helping you all. You are rising. But many of us are not yet there. It will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry. When the finance department brings me the bills and I look at it, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what? This is what one department is spending per month? But by the finger of God, when he gives you two riches, it's like a charm. Look at Elisha. Naman, what are you doing in front of my house? How about Elisha, come out, respect me. He said, who is leprous? Me or you? Go and bath seven times. He said, respect it while he's talking that jagger. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible said, those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flatteries. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first. 
before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Yes, Value. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Yahweh. I've given you one you must know God two be transformed three be extremely valuable number four you must master relationships you want to contend for kingdom influence you must master relationships not just have relationships you must master relationships everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships if you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence. In business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life. Is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people, two, even anything. Can, can your systems walk together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. There is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships. And that's why we never rise. We are born again. We are anointed. But the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest. Because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw... The wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because she's my friend and I love him. Because she's my friend and I love her. 
They are wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina. And they give me their very best. They have honored me so much. And I reciprocate it. It's a relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them. And they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you, and you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. Mm. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this here, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Shola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me now and said, Apostle, come to our region and we want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me and eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely and you care for them and you show them love, you will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please, immediately, take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, Hakanea le Ashiria. No relationships. Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And he says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? 
And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians there are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come sometimes, they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related, let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. <laughs> who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you in this kingdom. I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. They are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can be bound, favor will maneuver away in from. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same the one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all in your world. There is no stratification based on value and honor. No, Jesus had three, he had 12, he had 72, he had 5,000, he had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life, let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying, you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, you just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God... In my life, I will never be offended in. If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedipo's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting, Pastor Correde, he said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. How to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. You never 
connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect, just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. <laughs> you know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effort to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you would never do it again? You shouted at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> you shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lie. I will never shout. In fact, from no, no, no. I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's, it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in it. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. There are people connected to me. I know I will continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well and create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy sewing machine today. You will buy bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? Practice tolerance. Number six. Be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is a key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me. Oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave half for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table because the level of intimacy you require is not general well meaning you want me to remember you while away what are you bringing and then you say okay i know that you usually get thirsty so i found where to fetch water for you you see that i know that demons attack you frequently so i've said i pray one hour for you every day that's a contribution listen let me advise 
especially couples, whether you are about to marry or you are married, insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table. Don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice. Children, you too. Don't just say you gave birth to me. You have to. Where you get to a certain age, you should be a contributor. Even if it's not finances, you can clean the chair, you can weed the grass. There's nobody under my roof who will not do anything. No. You can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein is spelled the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? The person, yes, so I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way. To make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love. Practice genuine love. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things in a relationship is to discover for someone to discover compromise if i love promise and promise eventually finds out that all the while i really didn't love him i just had somewhere to go and i found out that he can help me get there so i was nice to him within the period of getting there is one of the ways great relationships die i've seen this happen with pastors I've seen this happen with business people. Ah, hey, Jimmy, I love you. Morning, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Night, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Next week, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, will I see you next week? And then a door just opens. And there's no a hey, Jimmy again. Because it was never about a hey, Jimmy. It was about me through you. Is your friendship genuine? Or are you just looking for something through people? Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Do I love you so much? I know how much I love you by how much I can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you. There are ladies who started relationships with men just because they are looking for daily bread. And the day the guy just said, Kai, this bread that I sell, something thieves just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this. You call again and it's, it's number busy because you want to prosper through a man. What of brothers that is just food they are looking for? Because you don't cook. You found out that a sister's hand has been blessed. And all of a sudden, how are you? It's two days. I've not seen you. Abba. And uh, she said, in fact, I was even thinking of bringing something. Now you are talking. And then the day she tells you that, look, um, sorry, the money to cook is not there. You say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing into God. I'm busy. I don't have time for things of the world again. Our world is such a selfish place. Listen, if you ever want to rise through influence, there must be a track record of your genuine love for people. I love Pastor Peter genuinely. I love his wife genuinely. I love all my pastor friends genuinely. Just like many of them love me genuinely. I know you love me genuinely, some of you. Many of you, but not all of you. It can't be all of you. I'll be fooling myself. But I know that at least you love me genuinely. 
you can be sure that I love you genuinely. I know Jesus loves me genuinely. Is that true? At least, it's, I know Satan doesn't love me, but I know Jesus loves me. I know my little children here love me. They love me more than you by far. Let me tell you, your relationship life is intact when children love you. I've told you this. If children run away from you, it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating. Because children are too innocent to run away from you. I love Jesus. Not just because the Bible tells me so. I love him because he has proven it again and again. And he's poured that same love. I love you. With all my heart. Do you look at all the relationships in your life today? Which one are you using? And which one is real? Hello? We are going to pray. I want you to look at all the relationships in your life today. Which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end? Not an end in itself. This guy is a prayer warrior. Let me just use him to scatter this because on my own I won't reach that gate. I've already seen the giant that stands. So let me partner with him. Let me use his voice to open that gate. That's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down. It's so painful for people to claim to love you and when you are down there's nobody there for you. There are many of our people who are getting married here and there. There are people who say they love them and never bring five naira. Promise you are getting married. Take ten naira. Hey, may the Lord honor you. You know this God that we talk about. You don't love. When you love, you give. You don't give money alone. You give any and everything. Hallelujah. It's true. One of my greatest prayers is for God to help me to continue to love people. It's one of the keys I have found to the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life. You can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love. The Bible says you are an empty symbol. You must genuinely have love. Not just for God, but for me. I love God genuinely. Ask him, he will tell you. I don't love God because I'm looking for tea. I don't love God because I'm looking for bread. I don't relate with him just because I want him to meet my needs. If I were doing that, then there are many things I would not... Maybe I would just be praying once a week on Friday. Lord bless Koinonia. Thank you. Thank you because there's already rice on my table for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Bless Koinonia. But I love him. I still go back to his presence and say, Lord, I've come again. You are my desire. You are my pursuit. You are my everything. Many of you, it's your relationship with God that went sour, that made everything in your life to go sour. The first relationship to be restored is your relationship with God. Then your relationship with those that God has ever used to bless you. If God used them once, He can use them again. Do all you can to preserve the relationship. Do all you can. There are times I send many people text messages. Just like you don't get replies from me sometimes. I don't get replies from them. But I'm not offended because I know they are busy. The most important thing is that I play my own part to make sure the relationships are there. Maintaining relationship is costly. Maintaining relationship with great men is costlier. Maintaining a relationship with God is the costliest of them all. Because it can cost you your life. You can even die. You will lose a lot of things relating with God. But you will gain a lot of things. You want to relate with people and not lose anything. You are selfish. You must lose something to stay. What are you willing to lose? You must lose your time to gain something. You must lose your time with God to gain the anointing. You must lose your time. There are times that you will have to lose your ego to sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you. There are times you will need to lose your appetite. You are hungry, but the person talking to you has not finished. You must sit down there. And sit down for as long as he's talking. Relationships. God has used relationships to lift me today. I can't tell you, you know, sometimes I don't even want to share. I like being myself, 
But I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching. I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence. Relationships. Somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you. Somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you. Even to Jesus, somebody told you about Jesus. Even if he's an angel, he came as angelos, a messenger, to connect you. Let's finish it. Give me five minutes. Let's not allow it go to part three. Number five. And we end for tonight. You want to contend for kingdom relevance. You must be unusually anointed. The last key. You must be unusually anointed. If you are just anointed, you will not do much. You must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing. One result today, no result tomorrow. One this today, no. Every time they invite me, to go for ministrations i am very happy because i know what the anointing is going to do to the people it's going to change their lives those of you who are first timers who have come here now i'm happy because while you are sitting something is happening to you you will get up and go back and wonder it will look like a dream the way god will turn your life around nothing just happens koinonia i will drum this into your life it is what is on you that controls what is around you it first starts from what is in you then it comes to what is upon you then it brings things around you if there is nothing upon you creation will be so harsh to you you will feel like dying is that true unusual anointing the difference between any two people is not the god they believe in the difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I am doing and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is nine more 1,000s. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them is to be unusually anointed. When you are unusually anointed, then you are a blessing. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. When I say anointing, I don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting, Ah, 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 ah. That, that, that's not anointing. Results. The ability to manipulate realities over people. Create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around. The anointing. I say to one, go and he goeth. I say to another, come and he comes. Immediately after the grace, there will be several people lining up here to see me. And many of them have issues. Whether I'm able to solve those problems is a different thing. How many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situations? It's not like you are not anointed, but you need to operate at a higher level. A higher level. A higher level. That must be your cry. A higher level. Thank God for where he has brought you. But my brother, my sister, at this level of anointing, the nations will not demand your grace. At this level is your local environment that will demand your grace. At this level of the anointing, you need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you. 
as it is now all men cannot seek for you but all men seek for you we are going to pray I want you to be relevant I have taught you the keys number one you must know God number two you must contend for transformation number three you must be extremely valuable number four you must master relationships even beginning from here there are people you need in life and destiny swallow your pride bury your ego and maintain the requisite relationships it will take so that when you are great and when they are great even if you are not there they will pick you through their greatness number five be unusually anointed the highest of the two riches when it comes upon your life then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow you will find out that all men will seek for you they will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life at that point you will never beg for bread again at that point your voice cannot be silenced again there is no cause and no yoke that will ever silence your voice are you ready to pray tonight we are going to take five minutes the prayer points are all that I mentioned. I'm just going to allow you with God for the next five minutes exactly. I want you to cry your heart in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to lift me. I want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom. Lord, I do not know you. Lord, I am not transformed. My limitation has pegged my growth. To a point that I'm not able to do much. Lord, I confess that I am not valuable enough. I have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life. Who have made me feel I'm more valuable than I really am. Lord, I have ignored relationships. I'm a man of God, but I've ignored valuable relationships. I've let my pride get in the way. I've let offense get in the way. And then, Lord, I'm anointed, but I'm not unusually anointed. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. You activate these five things. You have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever. Doesn't matter what background you come from. Lord, I now see why poverty seems to trace and trail my life. Lord, I now see why no one is willing to listen to me. I now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, jump over. I have come to the end of my sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of my life. Sing it with all your heart. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over, I have come to the end. I like you to pray. Let me give you one more prayer point and say, Lord, I will never be small. Let it be a vow you make with yourself. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it's a determination. The Bible says, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. They will not be small. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I make a determination in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that I will never, never be small. There is much to do for the kingdom. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I declare the seed of greatness, for the kingdom is within me. And I declare, that church you have given me will not be small. That business you have given me, that anointing, that grace, that career, multiply my influence. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Would you mind me giving you one last one? I want you to mention all the five points one by one. Especially for the areas where you know you are lacking. Some of you, you don't have a problem with knowing God. But your mind, your mind. There's something in your mind that is authorizing darkness to prevail over your life. Some of us, we are not exceptionally valuable. For some of us, we have ignored relationship. Open your mouth and mention them one by one. Grace, oh God. Grace from heaven. Grace to press into the things of God. Grace to know you more. Grace to know you more. In prayer, in fasting, in the study of the word, in corporate fellowship. Please make sure you are praying. Love your destiny enough to pray. Love your children enough to pray. Love your generation enough to pray. Lord, I cry for transformation. Something about my background, something about my culture, something about my sociological perspectives is affecting my life, affecting my growth, affecting my influence. I cry to you, O God of heaven, alter my mind, alter my thinking, alter my paradigm, alter my perspectives, change my perceptions. Lord, I receive grace. To be so valuable, to be needed and useful, valuable in ministry, valuable in business, valuable in my career, valuable in my profession, valuable as a man of God, valuable as a woman of God. I obtain that grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace for strategic relationships sent to my life, men and women that are gates to my next level. Grant me the fortitude to maintain those relationships. Grant me the wisdom to maintain those relationships. Lastly, cry for the anointing. Father, send more fire, greater fire, fresh fire, new dimensions of the anointing, new dimensions of the anointing. Expand my spiritual horizon. Let your hand rest upon me in a way that the nations will know that your hand is upon my life. Let your hand rest upon Koinonia. Greater results, greater signs, greater wonders, greater dimensions of the operation of the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Our time is... This is how people become relevant from absolutely nothing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The grace that it takes to know God, to be and stay transformed, to be exceptionally valuable, to master relationships, and to knock on the gate of heaven until new dimensions come to you. I pray that that grace be released upon your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you that where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that is fighting your influence, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that those powers live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I spoke to you about two riches. Whichever you do not have in your life, I command a supply of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as a corporate people, we decree and declare that you are increasing our greatness. And you are comforting us on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I call you not just a person but a voice. I declare from today be a voice. In your career become a voice. In ministry become a voice. In healing become a voice. In the prophetic become a voice. In business become a voice. In the academics become a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no one will be able to silence your voice. What has not been done by your loved ones, by your father, your mother, I empower you by influence to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hand. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.